tell you what, if you're a history buff or a war buff, I think you'd really like this state park. They've got really cool things to check out. Hey y'all, Rome Town Girl here. And guess where I am? I've returned to New Mexico. And I'm gonna continue my series that I started uh, two years ago, <laughs> reviewing the different uh, New Mexico state parks and giving you the Rome Town Girl review. So first stop this trip, Pancho Villa New Mexico State Park. So I think this park's kind of a dud. <laughs> However, it does have some really cool historical significance. I'm still going to show you around because maybe it'll be a place you'd like to come. Here's sort of a view of the park. I bet you can already tell why I don't think it's very pretty here. It's just a whole lot of dead cactus and looking at other people's RVs out your window. Never a fan of that. Oh. And wait till I show you the view out my window. I got a little tip for you if you come to this park. Avoid the mistake I made. There are two entrances, one right here to where the museum and the office is. Museum's closed, but I bet it's pretty cool. However, if you go just a little bit further down the road, that's where the entrance for the RVs are to come into the park. Not a big deal, but if it helps. Camping wise, I'd say the park is divided into three basic camping areas. You come in in the visitor center. So you've got this area where I am, or you go in the back. You've got a hankering for restaurant food. You got Borderland Cafe and Irma's Mexican food right across the street. Here's the points of interest in the area. So we're all the way down here at Pancho Villa, right by the Mexican border and the town of Columbus. There's Rock Hound, which I really love that state park. Here's Deming, which is the hub. If you go over a little bit to Lordsburg, that's where I went to that Shakespearean ghost town. And then, if you go up this way, there's Faywood Hot Springs, which I'll be going to and showing you. City of Rocks, which I've been to, and you can check out that video. And then there's a couple other ghost towns and ruins. And Las Cruces, we're gonna be going over that way too. It's a good place to start. Kind of gives us a nice overview. So I'm standing here on Coots Hill. Coots Hill. This is the hill named after Captain Coots of the 13th Cavalry. This was a really important lookout for the soldiers during the Mexican Revolution. From this vantage point, Mexico can be seen a few miles to the south. I'm trying to see if you can see anything in there. Oh, I do have some cool stuff. I guess if you're a history buff or a war buff, you'd find this park really interesting. They've got some cool stuff. Even I think so. And I could care less about history. Want to see inside? There's also a couple original buildings still standing. That's kind of cool to look at too. I need another adjective besides cool. Check this out. I know it's just an old building, but it's kind of interesting to think about the history of who lived in there and the goings on because this was basically uh, a fort. <laughs> this is the hospital. Okay, who thinks there's still the ghosts of soldiers that perished? Probably haunting right here. 
So where we're standing right now, this is the site of the last hostile action taken by foreign troops in the continental United States. Of course, led by General Pancho Villa, right? Hence the name of the state park. There's definitely dead people energy here. On March 9th, Pancho Villa raided Camp Furlong, where we are, and the nearby town of Columbus. And several people were killed, lots of other people were wounded, and there were lots of buildings and tents burned. So I guess it says something that there's still a couple buildings still standing here. So the underlying motive of why Pancho Villa um, attacked is still disputed among survivors and historians. I gotta Google that. Uh, so six days later, the United States took punitive forces under General John J. Pershing, who went into Mexico, pursued Pancho Villa, but without success. So in recognition of the subsequent long continued friendly relations of the two countries, New Mexico state legislation in 1959 designated this as a state park. Okay, you guys, leave me comments below. All of you that know what happened with Pancho Villa and all that stuff, because I don't. I just appreciate that I'm staying in a historical site. So I'm gonna take it all back. Okay, I gotta admit, I have a little bit more appreciation now of this place. Because what it doesn't have in a pretty environment, it makes up for in being a really cool historical site. I wonder what that is. I have to go look at that. Now I want to know what all these different things are. Now what in the Dickens is that? All right, did anybody guess what that was? You ready? It's the first Jiffy Lube. <laughs> it's a grease rack. And this allowed the soldiers here to practice servicing and operating the trucks. Kind of innovative, huh? There's a lot of firsts that took place here in Columbus. On March 9th, 1916, when Pancho Villa raided Columbus, he set off a monumental uh, chain of events. And that in 1916, then March 9th, the population here in Columbus was 436. Six days later, six days, mind you, the population went from 436 to over 10,000. Oh my in God. In six days. Because of the troops? Because of the troops, yep. Wow. Because right along Highway 9, going east and west, was a railroad. And then going north and south, Highway 11, there was also another railroad. So troops were coming in from San Diego, from El Paso, from Colorado, in nine days. For that achievement to happen in 1916, yeah. was absolutely phenomenal. The inventory in the United States Army in 1916, May 9th, they had a grand total of 28 vehicles in their inventory. Cars, trucks, motorcycles, right? Six days later, it had over 920 vehicles in their <laughs> inventory. Where did they get them, you ask? Right? Where did they get them? Where did they get them? <laughs> The, the, given the terrain that's here, the United States Army realized that they needed the most robust trucks that they could find. Guess who had them? Who? The beer companies. You're kidding! Because the beer companies had to haul heavy loads. So, what the United States Army did, they went around to towns like Milwaukee, Chicago, uh, Detroit, and went to all the beer companies and they confiscated their trucks. Oh, wow. Get this. Not only did they confiscate the trucks, they pressed into service all the beer company mechanics. Hence, the grease rack. Yeah. Yep. So, there was, there was not a combat aircraft unit in the United States Army. It was formed here, the 1st Aerial Squadron. And inside the museum, is a full-size Gen 3. I saw it, yeah. Yes. And everything is absolutely to mill spec. 
with the exception of the engine. Who till? Glad you asked, young lady. <laughs> Who till played a significant role in the attack on Columbus? What happened was the commander at the time refused to believe that Pancho Villa was ever going to raid a military base. As you went up on top of the hill, I seen you up there, mm -hmm. and if you look off to the southwest, and you can see Mexico, plain as day, right? He used Coots Hill as cover from uh, desert level up to the top of that hill. It's only 42 feet. That's it. But it has a commanding view. The, the village of Columbus couldn't see him coming. The camp, which was over there by the customs house, they couldn't see him coming. Headquarters building is right there, the adobe building. They couldn't see him coming. So Pancho Villa comes up using Coots Hill as cover the morning of March 9th, about four o'clock in the morning. He comes in, he brings in with him 600 troops. At the time, there was only 150 troopers stationed here. There was over a thousand troops here. That's the reason why he thought he'd never raid him. The commander did, he just he dispersed his forces. He, there was only 150 troops left in the camp. The rest were all on the border doing nothing. Here comes Villa, morning of March 9th. Got the troops outnumbered here, three to one. Easy pickings, right? And their objective was obviously to, to rob the bank, uh, get the merchants, the guns and the ammunition in the armory, and, and capture the horses. Pancho Villa fails miserably. He does? He does. What? Yep, he does, he does not succeed because of two individuals. Both were second lieutenants. One was a Lieutenant Lucas, and I forget the other individual's name. But anyways, just two lieutenants actually saved the camp for long and saved the town from being burnt to the ground. They alerted the 150 troops, First time they ever used automatic weapons was right here in Columbus. You're going downtown, uh, there's a there's a section right next to the Borderland Cafe, and if, you'll see an open vacant lot. And they got three of these machine guns online, and in that square block that's downtown, that was the killing field. Oh. Yep, that's the reason why they never built anything there. Villa went from over 600 men down to less than 100 in about 10 minutes. So he was not successful in, in raiding Columbus, but he did cause a lot of panic because the, the first time the United States had ever been invaded by a foreign entity was right here in Columbus. On March 16th, 1916, General Pershing jumped off from Me to, into Mexico, right here in Columbus, headed south to catch Pancho Villa. With him was 10,000 men. Oh my God. Yes, 10,000 men army marched from from uh, here down 500 miles south. Never did capture it. The people think that Pershing failed. He did not. Because he had, if you read his mission statement, it was twofold. Either he killed or captured Pancho Villa and or disrupt his ability to ever attack the United States again. Pershing did that because Villa went from a 10,000 man army down to less than 300. Do they do any kind of anniversary yes. or yes. celebration? It's not an anniversary, it's commemoration. Okay. Over across the street in that building the, in the railroad house is a gazebo. And they commemorate commemorate the deaths of these eight troopers that were killed here. What they do is they call roll. Oh. And they call roll of the eight, eight, eight troopers that were killed. And I'm Tyler, Corporal Tyler. And as they call Corporal Tyler's name, I gotta, I gotta, yo, present. Do you think there's ghosts? It absolutely is. Tell me, so this is also a haunted campground? Well, sometimes, right around this time of year, because this is this is the windy season, the yuccas don't normally do it, but the yuccas start to sing and howl. Certain yeah. wind directions, they will start to howl. It's a pretty eerie sound. Ah. Yeah, the wind has to come out of the, the southwest. Believe it or not, the same direction Pancho Villa came in. <laughs> Wow, now that is really cool. And what did they do with the customs house? Customs house is still there. Now the inside of the customs house is kind of neat. It's got a lot of the a lot of the graphic stuff in there. This stop here, it's literally a three-day stop. Have you been downtown Columbus? No. The entire village is designated as a national monument. So first day check out the park park in the village in the village okay second day go down to Plumas. is Plumas over the border yeah that's okay. mexico okay so cross over to mexico for the day and check that out okay and go have lunch there relax sure. with beer yep yep so that's day number two okay 
day number three, you're recuperating, recuperating from day number two. <laughs> <laughs> so it's fell, right? F-E-L. F -E -L. Right. All right, so when you guys come, Hopefully, Fell will still be here. Yeah, and he I, uh, can give you the tour that we can't do now because of, you know, the cocoa bug. So what do you think? You're gonna put Pancha Villa on your itinerary when you visit New Mexico? I think if you do, you'll be glad you did. An extra little bonus tip, especially if you're like me and you don't travel with a tow, everything right around here is walkable. There is so much to see, and it's part of this particular state park. And I thought that was really, really cool. If you've enjoyed this video, you can let me know by giving me a thumbs up and leaving a comment below. And if you want to see more videos like this, then be sure to hit that bell notification and that way you'll know the next time I post another video. Okay, I gotta go in and pack up so we can go off to the next park. See you next time! <laughs>